Welcome to the first lecture in the UAS Mapping for 3D Modeling course. My name is Istina Rezorska and I will be conducting the first couple of lectures in the course. Today we're going to learn about the basics of the unmanned aerial systems and this uh, lecture is going to be introduction to the whole course. The objectives um, that you will reach after hearing this lecture and uh, doing the assignment um, is the use of the proper terminology and understanding its meaning. There's a lot of confusion regarding the, um, the proper terminology uh, and I'm going to cover how to distinguish and what is what we are going to use so everyone will not be confused what are we talking about. Next thing will be to describe the whole system, what is actually uh, the UAS and what does it uh, what does it entail? What's the whole system? Next, we're going to move to classifications of the uh, different systems according to their make and characteristics, and we're just going to cover the basics since this is very extensive uh, subject. Uh, the classes of the UAS that we're going to describe are the main classes that are uh, that an understanding is es essential to navigate in the uh, UAS related research and uh, commercial use. We're also going to talk about the UAS development, how the how quickly the legislation and how quickly the technology changes and advances and why is that and lastly uh, we're going to cover like why is it needed to uh, use the UAS why is it worth to learn how to use them and how to process the data if you have never heard about the UAS or if you've never uh, been in touch in this with this technology it would be useful to look at this really short uh, overview article. It's not a research paper. It's just a short uh, introduction to the whole system. Uh, and so you can familiarize with yourself with, uh, with the very basic uh, terminology and uh, know what we will be talking about soon. To clarify the confusion about the names, you will see a lot of UAS, UAV, and uh, you also for sure heard a word drone from the media. So the UAV is considered a manarial aerial vehicle and the UAS a manarial systems. They talk about the same thing. It's just a matter of the popularization of the terms. First, when I started working with the UAS, they were called UAVs. Then, uh, especially in the scientific community, it was a uh, move, uh, move into uh, the direction of using uh, U uh, UAS uh, because it, it reflects better the complexity of the system. There is also the word drone that is used by media and uh, it's just in our everyday life, especially with, with uh, the boom in the off the shelf the drones or UAS. A drone, it is, um, it, it can be extended into dynamic remotely operated navigation equipment. I'm not sure what was first, the word the drone or its explanation. <laughs> there is also a shortcut RPA that is widely used still among uh, modeling community. Uh, it, it is the oldest uh, term before the UAV on UAS. Uh, the shortcuts have been established. The modelers were using remotely piloted aircraft and using the RPA terms. You can still find the RPA clubs uh, in the in the area. So they are uh, they fly with drones. They just call them a different name. The whole what is the whole uh, UAS? So the whole system. It means that it's unmanned. So there is no person on board of the aircraft. It doesn't uh, mean that it's it flies by it flies by itself. It is operated by an automatic or uh, a remote control. It is an aircraft, so it flies. It is in the air, and it is a system. So it con uh, it consists of a lot of elements. The main and essential elements are the control station that uh, is responsible for the vehicle operation. 
the vehicle itself that flies in the air, and also the connection between them. The control station can be an autopilot, uh, or it can be a remote control. It can be a person that operates it in real time. It can be also pre-programmed before, but it always is some, someone that is responsible for the flight route and the path of the vehicle. There are also a lot more uh, elements uh, of, from for the system because of the variety of designs and the complexity of the um, of of the UAS. There can be um, some elements that are related to the safe of operation. There can be um, there can be support equipment. There can be the ter flight termination systems, launch or recovery equipment, especially with the bigger uh, uh, UAS. There are also payloads that are essential for us for the course because payloads is the part of the system that collects the data. That is our main uh, main focus on the course. We are going to deal with the data. Uh, so once again, the, the essential elements is the aircraft itself, the control station, and the link, data link that connects one with the other. There is a confusion also about what does the unmanned RIO vehicle entail. Is it everything that flies and doesn't have a person on board? Not. The community mm, agreed that this will not include the missiles, weapons, and exploding warheads, but it will include all classes of airplanes, helicopters, airships, and power lift aircraft. It also doesn't include the traditional balloons and rockets and unpowered gliders. Although the first aerial uh, uh, imagery was taken from the balloon, what could be considered a flying vehicle and without a person on board, but Right now, we don't consider balloons as the UAVs or UAS. Even the, the whole UAV acronym, if you would like to know what does it stand for, it can be an um, aerial vehicle, aerial space vehicle, air vehicle, uh, autonomous vehicle. Um, if you want to know more about the whole argument about uh, the terminology, there is a short article that uh, say don't use the D word. They're UAVs or RPAs, but definitely not the drones. That was uh, written in, um, and also that's not a scientific paper. It's just for uh, uh, clarifying the confusion and where does it come from. <laughs> 